Agenda item 25 is consideration of approval of residential amnesty 2013 in association with Building Safety Month. Is that uh, Mr. Seacrest as well? Yes, that's me again. Thank you. Members of the City Council, the Southern Nevada building officials have designated May as Building Safety Month. And along with that, they're proposing a residential amnesty program. Uh, they've asked Mesquite if we would participate with them. We think it's probably a good idea. The whole idea behind this amnesty is that uh, uh, from time to time, people undertake uh, construction activity uh, without permits, uh, without proper inspection. Sometimes people doing the work are not licensed and so forth. With, under the amnesty program, if, uh, if an owner has, has made improvements, uh, they want to uh, get it inspected and make sure that it meets the code, make sure it's safe. They want to disclose that to the city. They can come in and they will not be penalized for doing it without a permit. They still have to, you know, get their permit once they come in uh, and pay a fee, but they don't have to pay double fees, which is usually the what happens if you're caught doing work without a permit. Um, the whole point of the, the program, of course, is you know, safety, making sure that the uh, work that gets done is safe, making sure the homes are safe uh, for, for families and for people's investments. Um, there's a, a long, in this memo, there's a, a quite a lengthy list of the kinds of improvements that people sometimes make uh, without bothering to obtain permits. Uh, room additions, interior, exterior alterations, kitchens and bathroom remodeling, enclosing a garage, block walls, electrical or plumbing work. Um, I mentioned here hot water heaters and water softeners. Uh, the question was asked me when I came into the meeting tonight by someone in the audience, you mean to tell me you have to get a permit to put in a water heater? Well. You do. Uh, the code requires a, a permit for that, and it's required to be done by a licensed contractor. Unless the work is being done by the owner of the home, as an owner builder, they don't have to be licensed, but you still need a permit. And I guess, you know, the, the thing is that uh, codes change, uh, licensing changes, things that may not have required a permit years ago do today. Um, and so, you know, if people have a question of whether some of these improvements need a permit, call, by all means, call the Development Services Office, talk to one of the building inspectors, uh, find out what you have to do. Again, the intent is to just make them safe, make sure they comply. Um, sometimes faulty installations are the cause of fires, the cause of flooding in homes. Um, sometimes a faulty installation will jeopardize one's insurance. Um, a person gets ready to sell their home. Uh, sometimes they'll find that they have to make costly repairs to, to bring it into code because of work that's been done without permits originally. And uh, so it makes sense to do this. But with the amnesty program, what we're asking the council to do is authorize this program, allow us to waive the double fees of people who voluntarily come in and get a permit and make sure the work is inspected. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Seacrest. Mr. Rapson? Excuse me, Councilman Rapson. I'm a mister, too. Uh, I um, realize that. Uh, I just, uh, th that kind of surprised me with the water heater deal yeah. and the water softener. You know, that's, that's something that every home that you buy new doesn't have a water softener generally speaking and you have to put one in and get a permit seems somewhat i guess um onerous if i may say so i i think that and this is really off topic but i'd like to examine this for things that probably are more typical re repairs rather than structurally you know alters altering something and those would be good examples, I think, water heaters and, and water softeners, and I'm not sure that there's anything 
else that falls into that category, but perhaps we could come up with a list of things that, given the times and the practicality and the reality of life, that we don't want people, yeah, homeowner friendly, penalize people for things that would be typically. Um, but having said that, I'm all for the amnesty and, and getting people back on the program and you know, on these other things. So, um, Thank you, Council. Yeah, I'd like to make a motion, but I'd also like to, to include some direction from staff to, to come up with some possible repairs to this that might make it a more functional thing. Ms. Hunt, you have a very concerned look in your eye. I thank you, Mayor Council. Legal smackdown. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just concerned. Um, Mr. Seacrest didn't speak, so I guess I'll speak. I guess before we can make a change in this ordinance, we need to make sure that there aren't requirements, code requirements that we have to follow. Um, so I, I give us that direction in the, I would suggest in the motion, but allow us to be able to make sure that we can make those changes. Okay. Legally, Great. thanks. Got it, yeah. I'm not suggesting we, we ignore a higher, greater power. I'm just trying to make it easier. Okay. So, unless there's other questions. I, I do have a light on. Mr. Seacrest, do you have a comment? Well, I was just going to say, you know, about six to eight months ago, we discovered that one of the handouts that we've been giving out to people explaining what handyman could do with the handyman's license, we found that the information was dated, out of date, and incorrect. Um, we obtained that information from the state, um, from the state contractors board, and state business licensing, but it was several years old. Well, anyway, there was a complaint about some work that a handyman did, and, you know, one thing led to another. Uh, as it turns out, the legislature made some changes in the licensing regulations. And so the information that we had been giving out, that we obtained from the state we thought was correct, was old, and, and so we had to go back and notify all the handy, licensed handymen in the community that they could no longer do this or this, and they had to contact the state to make sure they were properly licensed to do the work. If there's any, you know, if, if there's any of these that we can find that there's some leeway, some of this can be done without a licensed contractor or without a permit, by all means, we'll, we'll search for those, but. Thank you, Mr. Seacrest. All right, do you want another shot at that motion? Yeah, I'll do it. Um, I move to approve uh, Residential Amnesty 2013 in association with the Building Safety Month and would ask staff to explore possibilities of updating the code to where we eliminate some of these more typically considered repair items. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Call for the vote. Okay, that motion carries. With that, we'll move to agenda item 26, which is public comment. Those wishing to make a public comment, please step forward, state your name, and remember we do have a three minute limit. All right, seeing none, we'll close public comment and adjourn our meeting. Thank you very much.